This lesson is over even and odd functions. Recall the definition of functions. Each input has exactly one output. Function must pass the vertical line test, or the VLT. Here's a few graphs. Notice these cover the different types of symmetries that we talked about earlier. The first graph shows to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. So we see that it's symmetric to the x-axis, but we want to see if this is a function. Now to visually determine if something is a function, we do the vertical line test, which means we place vertical lines across the graph. Since the vertical lines cross the graph more than once, that means this is not a function. For the middle graph, we see that this is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And so we see the symmetry, but we need to determine if this is a function. So again, we perform the vertical line test by placing a few vertical lines on the graph. And since the vertical line only crosses the graph one time, this is a function. For the third graph, we see this is symmetric with respect to the origin. Again, symmetric to the origin means if you were to rotate the graph 180 degrees, it would look exactly like the original. So we see that it's symmetric to the origin, but is this a function? Well, we perform the vertical line test by placing vertical lines across the graph. And it turns out this is a function because it only passes through each point only one time. Now notice, we have two open circles. Since they are both open, that is what is causing this to be a function. However, if both of those circles had been closed, then this would not have been a function. Now the official definition of an even function means it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And it states f of negative x equals f of x. Now the definition of an odd function is symmetric with respect to the origin, which is understood to mean f of negative x equals negative f of x. Now, I know that it may seem a little confusing, so next we're going to draw a diagram to hopefully make more sense of this. So we start with f of negative x. That's your first step you simply plug in a negative x into the function. Once you plug it in, then we have to analyze the result. So let's see what the possibilities could be. The first possibility is that when you plug in a negative x, the result looks just like the original. If the result of plugging in a negative x looks just like the original, that's telling you that this is an even function, and if it's even, it must be symmetric to the y-axis. Now that's one option. What if you plug in a negative x, and this time it's the opposite of the original function? Now remember, the negative sign could also be interpreted as the opposite of. So we plug in a negative x, the result is the opposite of the original. If it's the opposite, that indicates that it is the odd function, which means it's symmetric to the origin. Now here's a helpful hint. Notice the word opposite starts with an O. Odd starts with the letter O. And origin starts with the letter O. So maybe you will find that helpful. Now we still have another option. What if we plug in a negative x 
and the result is not the same as the original, and it's not the opposite. Well, that just means it's neither. Neither means it is still a function, but it's not symmetric to the y-axis, and it's not symmetric to the origin. It's just a regular function. Now again, we saw this earlier. A graph symmetric to the x-axis is not a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. Therefore, it cannot be even, nor can it be odd. Example 1. Determine visually whether the graph is even, odd, or neither. And so for A, we have the given graph. And so we look. Is this symmetric with respect to the y-axis? No. Is the graph symmetric with respect to the origin? Yes. Since it is symmetric to the origin, which starts with the letter O, this must be an odd function. For B, we have the given graph. Is this symmetric to the y-axis? Yes. Since it is symmetric to the y-axis, we say this function is even. For C, we have the given graph. Is this symmetric with respect to the y-axis? No. Is this symmetric with respect to the origin? Not quite. It's close, but because we have one closed circle and the other one is an open circle, it's not the same after we rotate it 180 degrees. Since this is not symmetric to the y-axis and not symmetric to the origin, this is an example of neither. Example 2. Determine algebraically whether the function is even, odd, or neither. For A, we have f of x equals x plus 1 over x. Now notice this is a function because it has the f of x notation. Now we saw from the diagram to test this algebraically, we must plug in a value for x. That value has to be negative x. So every time you see x in the original function, you put parentheses, and in its place, plug in the value negative x. Once you've plugged in negative x, now we simplify according to the signs. So notice the first parentheses set is just going to be a negative x. The second term has 1 divided by a negative x, and we know a positive divided by a negative does create a negative. So our result of plugging in negative x gives us negative x minus 1 over x. So now that we've plugged the values in, now we analyze the result. And what that means is we look at each of the signs, comparing our result to the original. Is the first term have the same sign or the opposite? Well, it has the opposite sign. We look at the next sign, the second term, and that sign happens to be the opposite of the original. So since we've looked at all the signs, we determine, is it exactly the same as the original? Is it opposite of the original, or is it neither? Well, since all the signs are the opposite, then it must be an odd function. For b, we have f of x equals 7x cubed plus 4x minus 2. Again, we need to plug in the value negative x for every time you see x. So that means we have 7 times negative x to the third plus 4 times negative x minus 2. From here we need to simplify, but most importantly it's we're looking at the signs. Now following gems, we have to follow order of operations. We cannot do anything inside the grouping, but we do have exponents. 
Negative x to the third means negative x times negative x times negative x, which does give us a negative x to the third. Now the second term is a positive four times a negative x, and we know a positive times a negative will result in a negative four x. Now we still have the seven in the front term, seven times negative x cubed would give us negative seven x to the third, and then we still have minus four x minus two. So we've simplified the function, now we're ready to analyze the signs. Notice the first sign, is that same as the original or is it the opposite? We'll notice it is the opposite. The next sign we see, we compare that to the original and notice it is the opposite. The next sign we look at, notice in this case, it is the same as the original. So now we look at all the signs put together. Are they all exactly the same? No. Are they all the opposite of the original? No, which means this is neither. Example C, g of x equals negative six x to the fourth plus x squared minus four. This is your try it problem. Let's see how you did. First, you should have plugged in the value of negative x for every time you saw x, then simplified being paying close attention to the signs. Once you've simplified, you would have analyzed each of the results of the signs and noticed that all of them were the same as the original, so this is an even function. For example, D, we have H of X equals X minus the absolute value of X. Now, just like the previous problems, we still need to plug in a value of negative X for every time we see X. Now, what makes this problem a little different is that we are dealing with absolute value. Now, absolute value, looking inside, we see negative X. Well, negative x is the same thing as negative one times x. And since I have a number negative one times x, I can separate that into two separate absolute values. So now my function reads h of negative x equals negative x minus the absolute value of negative one, just looking at the coefficient, times the absolute value of x. Now the reason why we do that is we are separating the coefficient from the variable. The negative one is separate from the x. We do that because you can take the absolute value of a real number. Remember, absolute value is a, the number's distance from zero. So when we're looking at the absolute value of negative one, that simply means how far away is negative one from zero. Well, since I know its distance, negative one is only one unit away from zero, which means I could now rewrite that value without the absolute value bars. So now I have h of negative x equals negative x minus one times the absolute value of x. Now the one in front of the absolute value is a simple coefficient. Just like we have the option to write one X, that's the same thing as X, which means the one is not necessary. So I can rewrite this as H of negative X equals negative X minus the absolute value of X. We cannot bring the X out of the absolute value because we do not know what number lives inside of there. So this is our result but now we need to um, investigate or analyze the signs. The first sign happens to be the opposite of the original. The next sign happens to be the same as the original. So since all the signs are not the same and all the signs are not the opposite, this must be neither.